the impetus for this project came from two sources, really. I mean, the first was that St Andrew by the Wardrobe was facing a, an existential crisis. Having been blitzed in 1940, the repairs that were put in place in the late 1950s, this was the last church to be rebuilt after the Great Fire of London, the last church to be rebuilt after the Blitz, survived twice, but was on its last legs because those 1950s repairs, which were done with uh, materials that weren't very brilliant and as cheaply as possible in a time of very significant austerity, were wearing out. We needed to rewire the church. The electrics were at the point where they were becoming dangerous and we hadn't had heating in my whole time here, which was by the time we started the project, nearly five years. And I think the heating had broken down some years before then. The project came about because of the need to do something. The building was gonna be closed. The insulation to the building is virtually non-existent. The opportunity came about because of the new use um, to, to form a partnership with the tenant and then to try and put a team together to deliver something that was more sustainable and would make a future for this building. We have made sure that the building is watertight. We've insulated all of the roof. We've introduced electrical heating and that is in two forms. One is air source heat pump technology and the other is a rapidly responding electric radiators. We've also renewed all the power circuits throughout the building. We've renewed all the lighting circuits. We've introduced specialist lighting to give a really good standard of lighting within the space. The old system was entirely electric, augmented by portable heaters, um, either electric again, or the gas canisters. The energy tariff for the electricity will be a green supplier. I think the church are in the process of, of changing that over at the moment. And the idea is that this building should be net zero carbon when we finished. It is amazing. All I've known here is cold. So, you know, I'm almost kind of can't wait for winter to come so that I can kind of come in from the freezing cold and step into a warm and cosy office building. But it isn't just for me, it's all the services we have throughout the winter as well when people, you know, come in and they're cold. And, and I know that, that, you know, they're not really happy with that. So it's, it's just good to know that we can be providing a more hospitable environment to our congregation as well. In total, the funding requirements for the whole project were going to be over a million. What we were able to do, though, or the fundraisers in particular helped us do, was to get enough money together for a phase one contract that would help us deliver heating, lighting, everything to do with health and safety, from removal of asbestos to signage, the firefighting equipment, alarms, so that we could actually deliver the core of a building that was functioning and would enable God's work to be done here. There are some very simple things that you can do. Green energy tariffs will give you a big start for very little effort. Reducing drafts in your building, making sure that the, the doors fit well and the windows feel, fit well. They sound like small things, but actually air movement is one of the things that is most uncomfortable when you're in a building. And you don't want drafts, it actually makes you feel even colder than you really are. If you have runners on the seats, instead of sitting on a cold piece of wood, sit on a, on a cushion, actually you can sit there for probably 20% longer than you would otherwise do without feeling any discomfort. Lots of little things you can do without getting terribly technical um, will enable you to cut back on energy use. It will enable you to, to manage the building in a more sustainable way.